Uh, what are we picking? Oh yeah. All right. So we're gonna do another desktop environment. I don't see why not. Or are we switching back to a distro? What what are we doing? I don't know. I like both ideas. Good with doing a either. Yeah, I'm good with either. I like the desktop environments, especially the ones that we use already, because we can okay. just keep using them. <laughs> well, that's pretty fair. Where would we go with the desktop thing? It comes up in the history. Um, KDE got its start slightly before GNOME, <clears throat> and GNOME released in 99. Uh, Pla- well, KDE 1 released in 98. Okay. Are there desktops or window managers? I mean, surely there were. I know there were, but are there ones that we can install easily? That's a on challenge. Arch or. Uh... Coming up in this episode, we do a little upgrade. Firefox fixes a tooltip. The history of W, V, X, and C, D, E. How it went. And a new, old desktop to explore. Welcome to Linux User Space. I'm Leo. And I'm Dan. Dan, you've done some upgrading. I did, and it wasn't without some effort, even. It, yeah, um, it only broke, like, twice. Uh, yeah, I didn't... It, it, it didn't actually break, which was <laughs> okay. great. That that was really good. It didn't oh. do anything, though. So maybe maybe it was good that it didn't break. Well, better so, than exploding. Better than exploding. I, I did tell you to cross your fingers at one point, I'm pretty sure. I um, crossed all I, the fingers and yeah, the everything. toes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I did my homework. I did some, I knew there was some changes coming to Lemmy, and I was a little concerned because it was a big jump. Like, I had kind of sort of procrastinated a little bit, just going to say. Mm-hmm. And and some of that was because of the, the Ansible uh, version here that I've been running. Um, they hadn't tagged anything. Uh, for the the 0.18.4 release. So I was ah. really worried about that. I remember telling you, like, I don't know. I think we're going to hang out here for a little bit. And because, uh, like, I saw they had released the new version of Lemmy, but they didn't release the new version of the Ansible uh, playbook stuff. And I just was like, we're going to hold. Anyway... So fast that's, forward. That's smart, though. I don't blame you at all. Uh, yeah. So they came out with a new, yet another new version of Lemmy. So this was 0.18.5. And um, with that, though, they started make, making some tags in the Ansible playbook stuff. And so going forward, I can watch that and watch for the tags. And they're going to do that every time there's a release now. We've done some level setting, if you will, and so it'll be easier going forward. Um, so I'm excited about that. However, <laughs> they said that in doing this, there's a few things that you're going to have to change, and there's some breaking changes. If, and mm-hmm. if you don't pay attention, this won't work. Is this where the vars.yaml comes into play? Yeah, so they separated out some of the variables into this vars YAML thing, and they also changed the way the Postgres password, you know, for the database works as well. Mm -hmm. And so you had to move some things around and edit your new variable file if you needed to. And um, all that's great. Um, I did all those things. However... Whatever changed, I don't know. Um, the new playbook was actually looking to essentially re-add Docker, but I think it changed repos potentially. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, um, 
like it didn't remove the old key to the to the old apt repo oh. and so it, it was like a chicken and an egg thing like it couldn't get past itself to install the new ones because it was still broken on oh that key doesn't match and so apt was broken at that point and so how do you get the new key when the old key doesn't match because the yeah. old key doesn't match so how do you get the new key but how does the new key come if the oh, yeah i just wiped them out like i wiped out the key i wiped out the repo and you threw the chicken and the egg out and that's okay we have an answer to the problem everybody if you're listening yeah i went to the store and got a new chicken Um, see (laughs) that's the answer there's no chicken there's no egg you throw them both out you get a new chicken that's the answer to the question exactly you start making more eggs so i did that and that worked right so i got rid of the repo got rid of the key and then the Ansible playbook would continue with that. However, there was another thing that was kind of weird. Um, I think the Ansible playbook assumed I was running um, as root um, huh. on my Ansible control machine because it wanted to look at some files. Um, it wanted to it wanted to make sure that I had the new variables file, but in doing so, it wanted to do it as root which was a little weird huh. because i was i own i own the stuff i didn't need to do it as root right right anyway once i got over that and and actually was able to do the thing it took off and it said oh yeah you got those that's cool we'll put put those in the right place well okay you don't have any docker repo right now so we'll add that and add the key that was good, and then it finished the rest of the playbook and updated everything and restarted. Oh, now and, the key works. That's yeah. okay. So, so then everything everything worked, but it took me a couple of goes at it and add some, you know, tack VVV on the end of it so that I could see <laughs> where where is this getting hung up and why is it getting hung hung up? Right? Yeah. Apparently, I need to be doing this in Gen two because something broke for me, and uh, yeah, I need I need some verbosity. Yeah. In my uh, in my emerge commands to know where I left off because whoops, but yep. that's a conversation for another day. It is so. Uh, once once I I had to do some sysadminy stuff. Like that's 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 the type of things you get to do as a sysadmin. And uh, when things don't go right, you have to know how to recover it. You can't just totally rely on every bit of documentation working for everybody in every scenario because you have tailor fit your thing to your scenario yep and you know that's that's actually pretty apropos uh because we're about to go back in time and a lot of times back in the day uh the admin word wasn't something that that came until much later you got right. called a sysop a system operator mm-hmm. yep so my sysop thanks for putting all the work into that because lemmy is working i feel like Better than ever. I don't know if the increase in speed is because I rebooted my access point or because Lemmy's got a little bit of an edge because we've gone from 18.3 to 18.5. But It it um, could be one of the things that does handle pictures or images a little differently. Um, I feel like I'm not seeing as many thumbnails, and I don't know if that's a broken thing. I see some mm. thumbnails though, so I, it's not totally broken. So it could be just the way it's handling it now, and it's it's rendering things. You a need to clear faster. your cookies because well, uh, be. I'm I'm seeing them all. Uh, I'm looking at Lemmy right now. And by the way, for those of you that are just tuning in and don't know what the heck a Lemmy is, Lemmy is the open source Reddit, right? So if you're not over here, you should be because it's a really cool place to be. Um, and it feels like Reddit back in the old days. Remember when Dig mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. was was doing the whole crash and burn thing and everybody yep. was like, oh, we should make our own one with, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I do. Th- that's, that's, yup, that's what's mm-hmm. happening all over yep. again. And the only ones I don't see thumbnails on right now are uh, self-posts. Well, in Reddit, they're called self-posts. I don't know what they're called in Lemmy. Um, but it's basically just, you know, when you whenever you go, just like ask a question. Or, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. make a rant and there's no link to a web page to steal a thumbnail from. Yeah, yeah. I know there are some of that, right? Uh, there's yeah. definitely some of the pages. Like even in Reddit, it does that sometimes mm-hmm. too, right? So yeah, it yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a thumbnail to render or whatever. That's fine. 
I'm 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 mostly good with it. I think it's working good. Um, I haven't looked it at seems the net, like I haven't looked at the net data, you know, a- analytics on it yet. Um, that was on my list of things to do at some point. So, um, yeah, I just procrastinated way too long, and I did it yesterday on the long weekend. Um, because it I said, worked I said, out. I'll have some time to do that over the weekend, no problem. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, then Monday came along, and I'm like, "Ooh, I never did that." <laughs> yeah, I said the same thing about CDE history. <laughs> <laughs> so it got uh, done. Both things got they, done. They both got done. Yeah, it was it was it was what we worked on yesterday. So that's cool. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's we're we're a very under the wire kind of group, man. The pressure makes diamonds, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I I think it's good so far. I mean, yeah, it's working. So that's yeah, cool. Could more pressure make better diamonds? I don't know, but we're not on the track to figure that answer out. <laughs> hey, I figured if all else failed, that's what you got backups for. That is exactly correct. So in a teeny tiny little itty bitty browser watch, because I just can't get enough. Um, mm, no. There was recently a bug fix that is uh, on the docket for Firefox 119, which is as of the recording, not out yet on the various platforms. But this is a bug that's old enough to drink and drive, but hopefully not at the same time. Yeah, please no. No. Uh, but yeah, it's it's older than both of my kids. Back in June of 2002, right? Wow. Uh, it was the first time this particular bug got reported. And it's a simple bug. It's nothing that's going to crash Firefox it's just one of those annoying ones that people got used to. And if you're using Firefox, you might actually be used to it and you don't even know it. So if you have the bookmark toolbar hanging out up there by your uh, by the URL and you hover over one of those bookmarks and as, as you do, the little bookmark tooltip comes out and it says whatever it says, right? It says Linux user space dot show, you know, the place where you go to get history and stuff. You don't move away from that bookmark tooltip and you alt tab or the tooltip just hangs out forever. It never Ever. moves. Ever. 22 years, apparently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if, if you did this and never rebooted for 22 years, that tooltip would still be, still there. be there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the only way to get rid of it was to go back to Firefox and like rehover and then move off, and then it would be fine to move away again. But wow, I, I know a a twenty whatever year old bug, but it got fixed. So in 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 one nineteen, that's that's the beauty of this. Kind of thing, I guess. But, um, but here, uh, here's one of the more amazing things to me. The person that fixed it, they're only 25 years old. So the bug would have been... They, they, they were three they or were so. They were like three. When yeah. the bug was first identified. Yeah, but they said they, they noticed it when they were young and that was one of the reasons why they actually went on to learn how to code things so they could fix this bug yeah yeah like talk about a mission in life right there that's that's it right like i'm gonna fix this bug that's annoyed me since you know it existed since i was three i wish i was that cool i to I be know. able to fix XFCE's weird oh jeez power issues there we go whatever but i mean <laughs> Maybe <laughs> a hint. Maybe it's just a lid thing. Just a lid thing. It's okay. I, is it though? We'll see. So, uh, Yi Fanju, who wrote the patch, uh, encountered it on Thunderbird, which apparently has a lot of Firefox underpinnings. Yeah, the sure code. Yeah, as seemingly random segments of text floating on my screen. Uh, and extremely annoying. Yeah, it was. Uh, I've seen it so many times. And I, I think what is what is really cool about this is that the, the code base of Firefox uh, hasn't, at least in some ways, substantially changed. Yeah, that is amazing. That's a, but that's amazing, too. Right? It's lasted <laughs> the test of time here. You're using a part. piece of history. 
I, I Firefox, know. I, maybe that's why I like Firefox so much. I like history. I like Firefox. Maybe I just like Firefox history. There's going to be a Firefox history episode. There will be. That's 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 going to happen. I can that's almost guarantee it. That's a lot. It is a lot to do. But um, Gifan, thank you so much. Uh, that that was periodically annoying, and I'm <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> this got fixed up. Yeah. So it goes it, like it goes on to later to say, uh, uh, Zoo was. Born in 1999, just three years before this bug was submitted, had just finished their undergrad and master's work at Stanford when they went to work on it. And they're just starting their PhD in electrical engineering. And so, you know, that's just like dedication, I feel like. Yeah, this thing that's been hanging out as long as I have, I'm going to fix it. Yeah, uh, especially uh, someone is using Firefox in the first place. Uh, you're well, already cool. in the minority. Yeah, no, you're already then, in the cool club, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you program and then work on Firefox's code base. Yeah, you, my kind of guy. <laughs> That's fantastic. But you've you've made a couple of Firefox changes. I I love Firefox. I love it so much. I install, a lot, apparently. I, I do. I love, it, I love it so much, I installed it the way you're supposed to install it. Yeah, no apt. There's no apt here. No DNS. No apt. Apps, no, no. You get your snap out of here. No. No snap. None of that flat, no flat pack, pack. No app image. None of that. Get it. Nope. Get it gone. I I downloaded the tar and installed it the 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 way the Slackware way. The 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 native way. The native way. <laughs> the and hard so, way. So okay. It's not that hard. Well, no. It's it's really not. As long as you drop it in the right place and link it, you're good to go. They give you the instructions on the page. Okay, but I need to know why. I knew coming into this that you installed Firefox this way. But how come? I had the flat pack and um you know, so confinement is a thing and right so you said you know I'm running plasma and so one yeah. of the things that doesn't work quite right is the Plasma browser integration. <gasps> oh, and yeah. I really like the Plasma browser integration. So I can start and stop my videos and audio things that are running in the browser. Oh, yeah. That may. Okay. And see what's playing and running and whatnot. I, so I like that a lot. And because, like, the other thing that you could do with that is if you have KDE Connect on your phone, which I do, I can start and stop my stuff from my phone as well and see what's oh. running. And so it's like a little remote that, you know, I can. I well, can, no wonder you do. had that so quick. Uh, I mm -hmm. think it was in uh, in Matrix. Someone asked about yeah. how to, like, yeah, remotely control Matrix this Telegram. stuff. I can't remember. Yeah. And, uh, Man, so you, that... you had that real quick about, mm. oh, maybe use KDE Connect to do all of that stuff. And what a fantastic answer. It works pretty well. Yeah. It, I think it could work, right, for their use yeah. case. I'm not sure. But, you know, it's a, it's an option. Yeah. It was someone looking to control Jellyfin yeah. remotely uh, in, in various the... use cases. So it sounded, it sounded like they had like a, a media center thing attached to their TV, right? And so yeah. I feel like you could install KDE Connect on that and it would probably work. I don't know. Pro probably. Okay. So the, the next question, the next question I have about this Firefox thing, though, is mm -hmm. then how do you update it? Me hit the update button. Really? So it works like it does in Mac and Windows? I think so, yeah. Oh, wait, you haven't done it yet? Well, no, it wanted to update when you when you had me go look at the version, and I'm like, I'm in the middle of something right now, so maybe I'll oh, yeah. wait on that. <laughs> so a little so bit of back backstory. <laughs> we, we, were, we were talking about the 22-year-old Firefox tooltip bug, and um, we I, I wanted to know if 119 was out yet or not to find out whether or not uh, we would you know, be able to actually test this or not. And well, we, so the answer is no, you don't have that yet as we're recording this you probably will by the time whatever maybe it's coming but, soon and then so i got an update dan got an update well so yeah <laughs> I, I went and looked at my version and i said oh yeah hey just restart the update and i'm like um yeah maybe not right now i'm busy i'm <laughs> excuse me get, i'm busy i'm gonna I, defer I get back this to that. yeah yeah and so i haven't hit the button yet but it it should work it would i would think it wouldn't even let me do that if um like so it's it when it when you see that restart to update thing 
It's already downloaded it in the background. Yeah, right, exactly. And so I would think it wouldn't it wouldn't offer me to update if uh it wasn't going to work. Okay, so then now the 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 reason I ask this is you must then have installed it in your home folder as opposed to something like user as bin. I did not. I uh, well no, I installed it wherever it told me to. So when you click update, you're running it as your user. Would it have permissions to write the new files? Not sure. I'm I'm the We're... owner, I guess. Am I? Oh, okay. No, I guess oh, I well, wouldn't be. No, yeah, not be. an S, not in user S bin or S bin. Yeah, I don't know that where it told me to link weird. it. I'd have to look it up again. It may not work. I don't know. You know what? We're going to come back to this. I'm actually very curious about whether or not this is going to work. Uh, Because I have have a little... um, I wrote this a while ago because I was just obsessed with having Firefox run this way. And so I wrote a little script that just pulls down the new TarGZ and then splats it on top of the old TarGZ and doesn't mess with your profile because that lives in home. Right. Um, And... Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've got a working script that does that. But it was because I didn't have permissions to the directory that it was installed in because I didn't want to install it in home because I wanted every user, as if there are multiple users on my laptop, right? I'm, I went above and beyond here. Um, yeah, one, yeah, right. When you think about it, like one user, you've already got administrator access. Uh, some of that stuff is just kind of out the window. I get it. But like, you do want to be careful. You do want to be Dan's careful. Dan's out here running his root, y'all. I am not it, like I. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. No, no. But, you get so many warnings nowadays doing that. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, people shouldn't do that. There's a lot of reasons True. why not to. Yeah, it's easy to click on click on stuff and make it happen. You'll you'll see in the history. There's actually a whole lot of uh, there's a whole lot of don't do that. We'll we'll fix that because mm-hmm. the old way of doing things is not the new way of doing things. It's a little safer nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guardrails are uh, uh, installed along the side. So anyway, that's what I'm doing because I love it. And I love the Plasma browser integration stuff. And I like my KDE Connect. So, yeah. Stay tuned for the next Browser Watch. We're coming back to this one. This episode is brought to you by the letters W, V, X, C, D, and E. Also, YouTube. And you can find us on Tilvids. And also supported by our members over at Patreon. Thank you. All right, Leo. Big, big history. Huge history. We're going back further further than the desktop environment. We're going back. (laughs) Before time. Uh but yeah, yeah, we're we're talking Unix epoch time out here, 1970s something or other. Uh Okay, well, let's just let's just dive dive straight into it. CDE. The story of the common desktop environment is really about much more than a simple desktop. Toolkit turns and tumbles and touches on an entire stack of software mostly invented on or ported to Unix. It's the story of X, Unix, Motif, and many disagreements. As if anything in Unix could be simple. Unix, the ancestral operating system, born in the late 60s and 70s, had plenty of time to entrench and enrich itself with the help of Bell Labs. Whether the software was written for Unix specifically or not, chances were the software would eventually be ported one way or another to at least some hardware. This included, at least once they were popularized in the 80s, windowing systems and user interfaces like the Andrew Project, developed at Carnegie Mellon University, or Blit, developed at Bell Labs. These were some of the earliest examples of systems that used Windows a design paradigm that we still see today. If you can resize, maximize, and close it, it's a window. Which brings us to a successor that we likely know the name of, X. But before we can talk about X, we have to talk about W. 
W was a windowing system that was originally written for the V operating system. It was developed at Stanford University in the early 80s when hacker and porting culture was strong. After a while, Paul Asente and Chris Kent ported W to Unix on the VS100. A copy was given to the Laboratory for Computer Science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. Soon after, in 1984, Robert Scheffler wrote, I've spent the last couple of weeks writing a window system for VS100. I stole a fair amount of code from W, surrounded it with an asynchronous rather than a synchronous interface, and called it X. Overall, performance appears to be about twice that of W. The code seems fairly solid at this point, although there are some deficiencies to be fixed up. X is our reaction to W. This would be the first version of X, named X1, and was a product of Project Athena, a joint venture between MIT, IBM, and Digital Equipment Corporation, or DEC. While other systems like Andrew, Macintosh, Windows, and others worked on their respective systems, none offered hardware or vendor independence. This would be one of X's strengths. A few months later, in January of 85, X6 was released and got a push toward popularity by DEC and its engineers who ported X to the Microvax, their low-cost mini-computer. X6 was licensed only to a few companies outside of MIT, but under an open-style license, vaguely reminiscent of the more current MIT license. According to Jim Geddes of Project Athena, The code we developed was made freely available under something approximating today's MIT license, probably around X version 6. And if adoption wasn't fast enough yet, the few different iterations of X and MIT's permissive license sped things up dramatically. X9, released a few months later in September, added color support to function fully on the DEC VaxStation 2 GPX, which released in December. For X itself, the Ultrix Window Manager, or UWM, was the standard window manager until Tom's Window Manager, or TWM, was chosen to succeed it. These had come up organically because the X developers intentionally did not specify any information or guidance for how things should look on X. To actually define these things and get desktops sorted out once and for all, Sun and AT&T, already partnering on the next version of Unix, published the Open Look specification. Later, Xerox would join to do Design, Review, Implementation, Testing, and Refinement. A month later, the Open Software Foundation, or OSF, headed by big names like DEC, Hewlett-Packard, IBM, and others, announced their own venture to settle on specifications. But rather than build something internally, the group offered a request for technology. They wanted to see the best of the best. There were 40 submissions, with OpenLook being one of them the OSF whittled the options down to 23, and OpenLook made the cut. Ultimately, the OSF chose parts of a couple different projects, neither of which were OpenLook. HP and Microsoft's CXI and DEC's XUI to create the HP OSF Motif Window Manager. It was licensed such that it would require royalty payments to use. Not to be outdone, Sun went on to build Open Windows, which was X with OpenLook on top to replace SunView, their previous windowing system. After the dust had settled on the Motif move in 1990, things started to go downhill for OpenLook. Unix System Laboratories, or USL, inherited the OpenLook Intrinsics Toolkit, or OLIT, and Unix from AT&T. As the months passed, USL and Sun diverged. USL had their canonical OLIT, 
and Sun developed theirs to confirm more to the Open Look Toolkit candidate, XView, which was closer to SunView. OSL also developed the Motif Open Look Intrinsics Toolkit, or MooLit, to ease transition and free applications from having to choose interfaces. Over the next two years into 1993, Microsoft would grow more dominant, and everyone that wasn't Apple had to decide what to do. So they created the Common Open Software Environment, or COS, initiative. The Santa Cruz Operation, or SCO, USL, HP, and IBM were on board. Sun had also, finally, relented and joined as well. And AT&T and Novell also partnered up to join as Univell. These were the big six. Together, they offered manpower, money, and guidance. But others offered a little more. HP offered up View, its visual user environment, already living and breathing on Motif. IBM offered its common user access model, having failed in its OS2 aspirations. Sun offered Tool Talk, a way for applications to communicate, and the work to port their OpenLook applications to the new standard. And USL offered many of the moving parts of Unix itself. In June of 1993, with these powers combined, the common desktop environment based on Motif was born. It was up against a lot of uncertainty. At XOpen Topic Group, some wanted Microsoft Windows integration. Most wanted system administration. But early development of CDE was focused on look and feel, or the standardization of it anyway. Those features would have to wait until 2.0. But even so, HP quickly followed up with an endorsement of CDE as the Unix desktop standard. In 1994, the OSF and Unix International, a body meant to standardize Unix, merged, and in 1996, merged again with XOpen into the Open Group. After a monumental amount of work in 1995, the first major version of CDE, 1.0, was released, and 2.0, when most of the big features were meant to drop, was on the horizon. Then, in September, Motif and CDE, in the beginning two separate pieces, became one, now known as CDE Motif, sponsored by HP, IBM, Sun, and others. CDE celebrations were short-lived as another contender joined the fray, KDE. Matthias Ettrick was already nipping at CDE's heels, even in naming. Though the K originally stood for cool, mm -hmm. that was quickly dropped in favor of just K. With a few versions in between, version 2.1 of CDE is released in February of 1997. This would be the final major release of CDE by the Open Group. And while support was still offered, CDE would soon fall out of favor. A few months later, GNOME was started by Miguel de Icaza and Federico Mena. KDE 1 released in 1998, and GNOME 1 released in 1999. Unlike X, which enjoyed a more open license, neither Motif nor CDE has anything like it. It was proprietary all the way down. That is, until May of 2000, when Motif was released as Open Motif. The code was the same, but Open Motif would closely follow IBM's public license, with the additional requirement that the systems meet the Open Source Initiative's open source definition. Within a couple days, a new team, Less Tief, because Less is Mo, published an initial statement urging developers to migrate to Less Tief's more permissive open license. But while Open Motif and Less Tief were options for Motif, CDE was still unfortunately proprietary. 
And while CDE was still the standard on Unix systems, with slow development and licensing issues, some of the Unixes began to look elsewhere, with Sun being the first to jump ship. Sun announced in 2001 that they would drop CDE as the standard Unix desktop for Solaris in favor of GNOME. And while some of the later versions of Solaris carried CDE, GNOME would be the default and still is today. However, some Unixes like IBM AIX and HP UX still carry CDE in the latest versions. With Unixes still using it, but everyone else on the KDE and GNOME, CDE stagnated. But some never lost interest. In 2006, a petition to open source CDE and truly open source Motif was started by Peter Hawkins. As a user or former or potential user of the common desktop environment, CDE, I believe there would be a benefit to releasing the source code to CDE and the Motif library under an OSI-approved license. I humbly request that you, the open group, investigate this possibility and use your best efforts to accomplish this goal. Within a year, 1,200 signatures were gathered, giving the open group enough of a push to investigate whether or not it would be feasible to open source the projects. It took six years from the initial petition to do it, but it finally happened, at least for CDE. On August 6, 2012, CDE was relicensed under the LGPL and was available on SourceForge, where it still lives today. That still left Motif in the balance, but it didn't take long. On October 26, 2012, later versions of Motif were also relicensed under the LGPL. Work can now begin to rewind the clock all the way back to 1997. Well, fast forward to today if you're still using IBM's AIX. And it did. Peter Hawkins, along with John Trulson, do the bulk of the work on most of the releases along with a good number of other developers. The very first release came after 17 months of work to get things compiling, and 2.2.1 was released on March 1st of 2014 with the note, CDE 2.2.1 is now available on SourceForge, though it may take a little while to propagate. Nice work, everyone. There was a little more work to be done to get things built on more modern systems, but that was mostly completed in the following July with 2.2.2. It worked on most Linuxes, BSDs, and even Illumos, a Unix operating system. 2.2.3 in May of 2015 and 2.2.4 a little over a year later in June of 2016 comprised a ton of bug fixes and removing no longer used requirements like the XPrint extension, which had long been unsupported. 2.2.4a, the pre-release for 2.3.0, landed two years after 2.2.4 in June of 2018. A monumental amount of work went into this build and shored up a worrisome security workaround that forced RPC bind into insecure mode. That, along with hundreds of bug fixes, paved the way to the next big version bump. 2.3.0 landed a month later and stabilized the changes made leading up to the release. And a little over a year later, in October of 2019, 2.3.0a was released fixing thousands more issues and ARCH64 support, which means it's possible to run this on modern ARM devices like the Raspberry Pi. And a month later, 2.3.1 was released to stabilize all the new code and still somehow fix hundreds more bugs and reduce the code base substantially. It also brings in desktop app roots, which allows setting default applications for common file types. 2.3.2 was released in the first month of 2020 to fix some DT session issues that might lead to compromise. 
2.4.0 oh, baked for a good year and a half and released in July of 2021. It brought UTF-8 support, meaning wider language support for everyone. And PAM support meant less running with SUID root and a more secure system overall. There's also initial muscle C and risk V support. In 2.5.0, iMake was dropped in favor of auto tools, which, while still old, not quite as old as iMake. This was a substantial undertaking and took a year to accomplish. It released in July of 2022 with a ton of bug fixes and modernization of the code base. The final release, at least of this recording, 2.5.1, dropped in October of 2022. It was mostly a bug fix release, but also upgraded the corn shell. Now, before you go, hey, they didn't even talk about NSCDE. We know. There's definitely enough here to complete the history. But honestly, there's a lot of NSCDE to talk about. And with two years in development, saw its first release at the end of 2020 at 1.1. And a handful of releases later, 2.3 was released this past June. So we'll revisit NSCDE at a later date. So stay tuned for that little bit. Speaking of staying tuned, hey, you can catch all the great topics as they unfold over on our subreddit or our news channel on Discord or, hey, Lemmy, which is now up to date. But I got to make a, a, a little little side comment here about our Lemmy. I know there's some people that are kind of itching to join, if you will. Uh-oh, there, there's a list. There's a list of people. <laughs> hey, list of people, this is for you. <laughs> this, is, this is not a lot, and there's a few people that are interested. They, 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 you know, people that don't have their own instance to join. Whatever. Um, We did say we'd open it up to some friends of the show, but I got to ask. Please reach out like another method because um, I don't have the email integration working on Lemmy. And I may never, because like that's one of the things. Like when you have a VPS, uh, email is kind of they don't really let you just email everywhere all the time, all the places. Yeah, and even if they do, you end up like weirdly blacklisted, and then you have to play uh, the MX Toolbox game where you're like, "Why I am I blacklisted?" And then you get it works some places and not others, and you just scratch your head a lot, right? So yeah, um... opping Lemmy is hard enough. Uh, without so, having to deal with a whole entire email server. So yeah, so. if you could just uh, reach out to us, uh, let us know that uh, you're looking to you're you're a real person, um, and you're looking to make an account. Uh, that'd be cool, and uh, we'll, we'll touch base that way. You know the way to do it. If you're listening to this or you're watching, yeah, I see you. This um, LinuxUserspace.show, you can. Send us an email directly from right there. There's a contact us thing. That works. Yep. And you could it goes straight to our inbox. And email is fantastic. At least I will be the one to be like, hey Dan, did you see that email? And then we have a conversation about it. Yeah. But yeah, that, there's that's a, that's a good method. Hey, that's there's great. all kinds of ways. Uh you can uh DM us on I we're still on the bird thing. Uh um, we are. But you know, Mastodon is Fantastic. We have that, yeah, and people reach out there. That's a good place. Do that, and then, of course... You know, Telegram, Mastodon, Discord. We have all those, too. Like, you totally reach out on any of those. Yeah, or you can watch one of those live streams there and be like, hey, by the way, I signed up for Lemmy. You should approve me. Go, go, yeah, go look there, and uh, we can do that. And uh, you just, you'll just have to remember your password and then go, go, yeah, be able to log in. You'll be good. Use a password manager. Don't forget it. Yeah, Don't. that helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Could be bad. So anyway, yeah. If if you if you're struggling to to get logged in there, that's why. But don't get mad. We still love you. Forty thousand dollars, Dan. Forty. All right. Thousand let, me, let me just. Dollars. Let me just. Just you know, Is, like a like I won the lotto. About there about around around 1999, 2002. Wow. That's a lot of money back then. That's the amount of money that you would have paid to license CDE 
and motif. And you know I would have. You know I would have. Well, you wouldn't have really had much of a choice if you were running on Unix and you wanted a full-blown desktop environment. Yeah, yeah, because wow, is that expensive. Wow. That's ex- that's that's an entire support contract for a very specific software for an entire year. Huh? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> wow. Well, thankfully, we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. I had a good what, experience, did... just the same. Yeah, well, good. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, well, good. <laughs> I, well, I mean, seriously, because uh, I don't think... Uh, we don't make enough on the Patreon to No, no, our our account is not that full to to be able to mm-hmm. afford all of well, that. Well, we would have had to buy two, so it'd have been $80,000 a year. Yeah. Patreon's not there. But you know, hey, you know what? Uh, Maybe I, I one feel day... like it'd have been cheaper if I had have flown to Texas and looked over your shoulder as you used it <laughs> somehow. You're probably right. <laughs> and then we would have still had plenty of money to go have barbecue. But Oh, man, that sounds good. That's not how it went. It didn't go that way. But it did go well. Luckily, a few years ago, CDE and Motif were fully, really, actually yep. LGPL open sourced, which means that me and you get to take a drive down memory lane. And I say memory, not our memory, unless you uh, did a whole I, lot of Unix mainframe-ness. No, no, I did not. Um, might have seen it, like, literally in the background as people were doing right. things. Not me personally, though. Nope. Nope. Exactly. So somebody else's memory lane is mm-hmm. what we're driving down. And it was, man, look, hold on. I I can't figure out. Okay, so here's here's one of my issues. Before you get into your thing. That's probably some X settings, yeah. I'm sure there's, yes, there is an X setting somewhere that I can turn off the go to sleep thing on the CDE, but I can't find that or, well. They don't expose it. In the well, GUI. there's not a toggle. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's, not there's a, no, yeah. There are just a whole, there's just not a whole lot of toggles. There is not in... a whole lot of toggles. Um, There's still a lot of stuff you have to configure in a, you know, file someplace. Yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. I've, I've got a few. And, you know, when I found them, I was like, oh, wow. So now I can double click things, which is cool. But before I get into <laughs> that, how did your CDE journey go? All right, so it went surprisingly well. Like it, it does, it's pretty functional. Like it's amazingly functional. And so when I just want to clarify again, we use the actual CDE, not yes. NSCDE. I mean, I did that real... later. But the real CDE, the, the original thing, that's what we used. This this was the code base. This was the yeah. CDE and uh Motif slash open motif code base that was open based in 2012 right. that was taken and released in 2014 and then continually released. This is, I feel like the, and this is no shade to NSCDE at all. The, the closer to the original source successor of CDE. Yeah. I, I think this is as close as you can get. This yeah. is it. This is the original, the OG. Yep. And uh, so that's what we used. All right. So I, I want to take the lazy way out, which I don't know. Maybe that surprises people. Um, so I chose. Kind of. I chose uh, Arch <laughs> and I was going to use the AUR package. And, and specifically, I used Endeavor so that I could just kind of cheat and install it with Calamari's. Because, uh, again, I really did take the lazy way out here. Who, who really? <laughs> okay. I got a, got a hot take here. Who really goes through the real Arch installation oh, and not I, just some kind of weird Arch installer if, kind of fudget way? If I was really intending on keeping this, I would have. I totally would have. I've done Arch. But we know I've done Arch. You, you, I don't doubt. Yeah. Because even I did that. But... I nowadays, don't know who else. nowadays, I don't know. especially with the the invention of the arch installer, even dude, the arch installer been... would have been probably a better way to go. Yeah, no, mm. I, but I didn't do mm. either of those. I, I used I used a really cheesy way. I uh, challenge you, arch heads, which ones of you did it for real? Like really, actually cobbled it together, not just the arch way. I you know copied and pasted stuff from the handbook. Like really, really. Did that? Can you really say Arch? By the way, 
Mm-hmm. Well, I, I maybe use Gen- so. I use Gen two, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we, we both do. I just make it's it's, it's way right there, more folks. mistakes. It's, it's... I'm more afraid of my system than you are. We'll put it that way. <laughs> I got no fear. It's not you know whatever. I'll fix it anyway. Um, yeah, no. So I was I I got a lot going on. So I just want to take the easy way out. And uh, I thought that'd make it a slam dunk. Just use the AUR package. Mm-hmm. Turns out, no, it, that's not a slam dunk. <laughs> um, but it, it it did prove the importance of reading not just the AUR package, but all the comments that are on that their package. And oh there were some pertinent ones. Uh, some other people have gone through the effort and uh, figured out that uh, it doesn't just work out of the box. You got to do some things. And so, in particular, part of the AUR build. Um, called to install i want to say the uh terminal that was a laundry list man yeah but there was like the terminal emulator it wanted to use sudo to install that yeah and you didn't need that um so you had to go there and it or you had to add that i can't remember which it was maybe you had that that. that was there was something that required sudo and you had to go in and and like add that to the yeah because it was to the to the script right and so I had to edit the AUR package and rebuild the AUR package and then rerun it again to get it installed. I got it and installed. And that's all that, that – and that was it? That was it for you? I could, I just couldn't find the spot. Well, I'm pretty sure I used grep to find the exact spot wherever that was. A smarter man than me. And so uh. I, I did. I looked at the comments. I followed the, I followed the trail, and I got there. I got it installed. That was great. However, um, maybe you can use some of the desktop managers like SDDM or, um, you know, LightDM. In SDDE does, I do believe. Or one of those. Um, But, and and actually there were instructions to do that. I couldn't get it to work. It never launched. So I Mm. switched over to the, whatever the CDE uh, login manager is. Um, Basically disabled. DT? DT, yes. So yeah, I, DT login, I think, is what DT it's called. DT login, yep. And so I disabled SDDM, which is the one I had installed. Um, disabled that, enabled DT login, rebooted, and then I got greeted with the DT login thing, and I was able to log in, and it went right into CD, and everything worked as it should after that. Um, Man. On, on an Arch system, so pretty pretty great. Um. Yeah, and so you like it was really usable. Like you wouldn't think something that is this old. There, at least the code base is stemming from the beginning of time. You wouldn't <laughs> seriously <laughs> though. You would. That's not think even an exaggeration. I That's know. Not an exaggeration at all. <laughs> you, you like it's flabbergasting in a way. You think that that still works, and it does. Yeah. It it's still it's a different paradigm. Not going to lie. Put your mind back toward the Unix epoch time. Oh, yeah. Was that like 1976, June, January 1st or something? Like, this is when these the, the ball started rolling on dealing with stuff like this. And this is the lineage here. This yeah. is what's coming. And it oh, is impressive man. that something that old, that storied, Props. that different yeah yeah, can still compile and work work on linux kernel 6.2 or four. what are we on right now i don't know five something yeah like i don't know like don't my word impressive absolutely impressive And, and and by work i don't mean like so it's maybe not as efficient as like modern design but but isn't it? It reminds me a whole lot of XFCE. Well, I think you found the secret to it, and it's a thing I hate. But um, <laughs> it, you just flat all the desktop, you know, things on the desktop, and then you can launch them real easy instead of having to go double click a window, open that one up, double click another window, get into that one, and then launch something right like True, inside. Yeah, like nested windows. Eh, you know, whatever. It's it's not efficient. It's not efficient. It works. It's not efficient. Right. XFCE it, definitely has a leg up because they have a launcher. A launcher, yeah. 
and so, like a menu but, thing. But you say that there is the dock thing that's down at the bottom and you can launch true. a bunch of stuff from that. And they have these little trays that come up. Yeah, up that's out true. Of some Submenus. Of them, and, and, and that works really well. Like that whole thing, that's super efficient, I feel like. I feel like those trays that launch up, like have like not everything has that. I want to say like Latte Doc had that at one point, and and there's some other ones that sort of do some similar things. Deep in it, kind of like Deep in, maybe Deep in's inspired by okay. this. I don't know. I, I I really like it, right? Because it works. You know, you can you can think of the that bottom tray as more than just a launcher tray, right? So right. think of like Budgie, and think of Mac OS, mm-hmm. and think of Windows and how one button does one thing and you that's can have it. a sub menu on that button. Right. But that's not what the launcher here is about. Right. It is like imagine if the control panel was down there and when you clicked on the little sub menu button, all the control panel stuff right. popped right, up. Right. Or all of the settings application stuff popped up. Right. And there are multiples of that. There's a printer button at least by yep. default over here and you can you'll see all of your printers so you know what you're sending prints yeah. to um and you can even customize that thing you can customize like a it. modern that, dock that would be the way to really get efficient and work with it i feel like is to to start tinkering on that dock thing because that that works that's a good style and it works well what blew my mind was that this is one of the first iterations of what we understand today as a modern mm-hmm. dock. Mm-hmm. Latte dock, the Mac OS dock, right. the cinnamon panel, the, right. all of these things that live down in the bottom or the left hand, the Unity panel. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, well, Gnome now, I guess. Um, they they all have their lineage owed to I think so, desktops yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. CDE. This is where it started. And it is But it went away for a while. Like you you saw things like um oh even Windows, right? So Windows doesn't mm-hmm. really have any of that sort of stuff. But yeah, like and three s- and three point one and one one, they didn't have a panel like this. They had the program manager and you pop that open. And it that there's actually that paradigm exists here too, mm-hmm. where you open a folder and that folder has your binaries in it, and you double click on them, and then they launch. But you know, Windows Windows three and three one and three one one really kind of adopted that. But then in ninety five, came out with the start menu yeah, the, launcher, the, whole, the launcher, and the whole panel thing, and like it's just a different design altogether. And but, that's but I feel where... like Windows eleven is kind of bringing some of that back, right? Mm-hmm. It, for at least in the Windows land. Um, yeah, you right click but... on the Windows button, yep. and all of a sudden. Now yep. you have all kinds of things that you can do. And then, then you've got la. all the other you've got all the other things that are down there in in the in there too. So I, I don't know. Like what's old is new, uh, I guess, is is kind of how I go with that, I guess. And so some All lo- the cool stuff was invented in the eighties, man, and now we're just making like refreshes and rehashes of all the old stuff. It's it's interesting and kind of where are all the new ideas? Man? Yeah, it's it's because, amazing. It's amazing how stuck we are on that. Yeah, and, and one of the other things that that CDE has that I thought was a newer invention was workspaces. There's four by default. Right. I don't know if you can change it. I didn't get down that far, I but don't there know. are. But yeah, there's four. Four. Of them. Yep. Yeah, one, two, three. They're all different colors, and they do exactly what you would expect with workspaces. A workspace yep. to do. Yep. <laughs> and eighties. 90s, I man. Know. And you and can the... move things between workspaces and, uh, you know, obviously have different stuff on different workspaces. So, you know, you're not distracted by something that's going on in a different one. I, yeah. I don't know. Like, that, that's, a, that's pretty cool. It's a great way to, to work with your things. Um, For the most part, like, so all of that stuff is revolutionary, even still today. I'm going to say it's revolutionary and still works. That's crazy to me. Still um, crazy to me. There's a couple of things that don't work real great, I guess. And it, it, it's, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, maybe it's the way we use things. Um, so like Discord, Telegram, they've got the, the little app indicator things and whatnot, oh. you know, down in the tray so you can see they're running and you get the notifications and all that jazz. Yeah, that doesn't work here. Um, hey, you know what? You know what? To CDE's credit, doesn't work on GNOME either. 
No, not without some sort of, <laughs> you know, extension plugin thing that does not, not by default. Not by default, it does not. Yeah. No, it does not. That, that's that's one thing that really annoyed me, and it worked the same way in CDE. Okay. So the the desktop environment invented in the eighties, when you close Discord, Discord doesn't close; it continues to run in the background. But you behaves can see it. Yeah. exactly the way that it behaves in GNOME today. Mm-hmm. You close it, still running in the background. You can still get notifications. How do you bring it back up? Well, you launch it again. Weird. How? Uh, it's annoying. Weird. Yeah, you never really closed it, right? You can't really close it. Probably yeah, could. We, like we really kill or something on... like that, but I don't know. Right. And that P kill. P kill is what I did every single time and in CDE and in GNOME. Mm-hmm. So what's old is new again. Isn't that funny? It is. But here's the part where I, I say, I, well, all right, one thing, so one more thing that I did love, I love the color scheme, honestly, it really did work, it's like, I don't know how that works so well, but it felt like warm, and it just, it's like, not dark mode, but, and it's not pretty, but it works really well. There was no yeah. kind of dark mode consideration whatsoever. It's got the you nice were in, tones. You were in a insanely lit room looking at an insanely lit CRT to be able to do your work. Dark mode wasn't even the wasn't faintest inclination at the time. So bright colors like baby blue and light brown were totally considerations. And before we started recording this episode, I look back and I'm like, why do I like those colors? Why are those colors fine to me? You know, I don't... I don't I don't love them. I wouldn't choose them if I went out and you know, terrible, looked at some swatches and oh, yeah, no. figured them out. But then I saw there's a book right there, yeah. right behind me that it's has the, colors the on exact it. same color scheme. Light blue, light orangey brown. I don't know how I didn't put those things together. And CDE, by default, has that color scheme. It blew my mind, and then I had to sit down and record all of this. Mm-hmm. Well, I know, I know. But it totally makes sense now. It, it's a it's a good color scheme. They complement each other. It's it's very obvious what is in the background and what is in the foreground. And you know, the gray in the terminal, the gray is, is nice. Actually, pretty decent if you consider that you're in a brightly lit room looking at a very bright CRT. It's not straight up white, like, I guess. Like, when I think of Windows in the way it was in 3.1 and, and, and even 95 and 98. Yeah. Like, white all over the place, right? There sure was. It yeah. was just wowzers. Um, so you don't have that. And it was kind of, it's a, it's a nice, it's, it feels nice. It's warm. It's you know uh, what? inviting. I don't know. It just works for me. Now, true new other revelation. This was dark mode, dude. It was. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's the best that you could have, right? And, and then somehow we forgot what dark mode was because Windows was invented. I guess. And then everything was white background and we forgot where we came from. We did for a little while. Look, I mean, look at that. It, it's it's a dark teal background. You've got a dark gray background with white text. Yeah. This is dark mode. Mm-hmm. We forgot our roots. We forgot our roots. Our WL root. No, no, no. no, no but not, CDE no. roots. We forgot our CDE roots. Yeah, our, yeah, we did. What have we done? I don't know. What? <sighs> anyway, here's the part where I make a confession. I actually did Uh-oh. try NSCD for a very little bit, um, yep. and and so it better does, than me. It, it it does carry over the the color themes and, and a lot of the same design paradigm, um, but um, so it's based on FVWM instead of you know underneath, right? So FVWM is a bit of a spiritual successor to TWM. You know, so Tom's right? my manager, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, full full circle here. And so, I think just because it's it's uh it's a bit more modern, it brings some better functionality. And those app indicator things, it doesn't totally solve that, but what it does for you 
is essentially you get another little window down there with the icon in it that would be mm. like an app indicator kind of thing. And so you can see it running even when it's not running. And so then you can close it from there if you need to close it. So it, as far it, as app indicators go, it's a little it's hacky. more functional than no. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little hacky, but it brings <laughs> along some some modernization, I think. Um I'd have a lot of time to test it. Um yep. I just very little on that. So I can't give you a whole rundown other than I noticed a few things that seem to seem to seem to work a little better. And I think they they also take some more modern theme things like as far as applications and they they managed to incorporate right. those in there like KD4 or 5 GTK stuff like stuff that CDE wasn't even invented for so um mm -hmm. I think it's going to handle some of those things a little better as far as your apps cuz your apps do look a little uh not I won't say out of place but a little different right yeah and and I think that's a big reason why uh, I didn't go down the NSCDE rabbit hole as far as the history is concerned because it, it I, I it, really it do feel like NSCDE, yeah, yeah, is is more of a CDE remix. It is. It, while it still has the same, a lot of the same look and feel, it is a lot more of a remix than it is um, true one to one successor. Yeah, yep. it wasn't a continuation. CDE. It's it's a bit of a yeah. So inspired by yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Inspired by featuring. Yep. And so, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's something to check. And uh, yeah, we, we will at some point. Yeah. So, as yeah. far as my journey went, um, it was it was eventful. I tried it on Arch. I, I did try the Endeavor Arch way to do it. I, you know, Endeavor as the Arch base, just so I could get access to the AUR, so that I could pull in CDE. Um, I was not as, uh, what is, what's the word here? Uh, crafty mm. as Dan was to be able mm. to figure out where the pseudo meant to go. I hacked around literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very true. And, uh, but I'm glad that you did it on Endeavor, mm. uh, because I ended up going a different direction with that because Sparky mm. Linux based on Debian does indeed continue to package cde it's a sparky thing and yeah not not so sparky is based on debian right correct but the cde package is not part of debian it's part correct. of the sparky repository itself like separated and so they yeah. don't they don't so, offer the source files for that which is a little strange i guess uh, but they do give you the binaries. Yeah. Uh I well, yeah, I guess my my intention was to get CDE up and running without pulling my hair out and Sparky definitely did that for me. Um I do have some gripes though. Sometimes when I log in to to CDE, like nothing works. Mm. Like the clicks don't work. Mm. The some of the windows, so the the help always comes up when mm. I start up the desktop environment. I know I'm going to have a bad time when that doesn't show up. No. Yeah, I got to like, you know, Alt F1 to get into another terminal and then, you know, reboot. Okay. So the the answer to this is to log in to the open box. If I log into open box first, then log out and then log into CDE, I have a really good time. Things work. Mm. And like, as you can see, I'm recording. Yep. Audacity. Yep. Right yep. behind me. Yep. Look at this. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's working. So it, it, it works with modern software. Yeah. I, yeah, it right does. before the show, I installed Caden Live mm -hmm. to make sure through Flatpak, by the way. So Flatpaks work in CDE um, to make sure that I would be able to do something like that. If, uh, you know, not, not that. Could you live in it though? I think you could is essentially what he's saying this is yeah that's what i'm getting at that if for some reason gnome and kde yeah all the and everything else budgie and gone. everything else just like just gets nuked and all we're left with it is CDE, work. it would be fine because you know a, a lot of the paradigms that that i grew up with right i mean i, I grew oh, yeah. up with windows 3 and oh, yeah. windows 95 mm -hmm. that that is that is where i really got 
the love sure. for I think a lot of people tinkering. You know, our age, that's where they grew up. That's for sure. Yeah. And so, you know, I had a bunch of desktop icons and, mm. you know, stuff splattered on. It, there they are. And the, it works. The, the, the launcher is semi-configurable. You can put stuff down you can there, but put it's stuff not like in you it. can... Yeah, you can't add 12 different things no, down there. No, that's too much. So, so what I've taken to doing is, you know, I've got my terminal up there. I've got Firefox up there. Yeah. I've got uh, the run dialogue. That's, oh, that's the big that's one. Oh, that's a biggie. Yeah. That's how, that's how I do my Discord. Because Discord works mm-hmm. quite it does. well, It actually, actually does. Yeah, no, and it's Telegram even. Telegram's yeah, not I, I, as well. It kind of wants to take up the middle of your screen, and that's all it does. That's so weird. It's, it's a little like, weird. I don't know a, why. Uh, it's a square in the middle. You can't move it. You can't move it. It's it's just in the middle. So you can't resize it. Like everything else, you can resize, which is I, but that one you can't. Yeah, yeah. I I want to say I maximized it. Oh, you can maximize you it, but you can't, you can't resize okay. it, right? You can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't get bigger or smaller. It's just big all, or all, little. All your screen or just right there in the center. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something about the toolkit, I, I guess, doesn't I guess. doesn't I don't appreciate... know how that works. Yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't investigate it. You know what I did? I just gave it its own workspace and I said everything else can use a different workspace. That's just fine. Smart man. <laughs> Smart man. That's the way to do it. Um but really like if, if you work in the terminal a mm-hmm. lot, CDE is going to be there for you every single time. Yeah, I mean, like you can customize fine. that. Yeah. That's that's not bad at all. You can even bring in your own terminal if you want. You so could. if you want like you totally the extra customizations or stuff like that, you could you yeah. can bring that in. Um but right, like Firefox worked just fine. Mm-hmm. Every, everything in a flat pack worked just fine. Well, everything that I used. I didn't use um, any flat packs. I used the stuff right from yeah, Arch and, repos but, and it worked great, right? So I yeah, mean, totally. And, and I wanted to reach out and, and do that and actually try the flat packs, but the flat packs work. Now, one thing I didn't do was get the file dialog to come up. I didn't download a whole lot of stuff from mm. Firefox. I did everything web based. I don't know if I tried Firefox, that either, that but worked. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm Maybe that, sure you get something. Yeah. Um, and then like uh so if you remember Windows three point one, you remember that, you know, everything was a window, you had to go into a window mm-hmm. to get into your yep. like yep. where your files were or to open your programs or whatever. That that's very true for C D E as well. Um but one thing that was added in, as I mentioned in the history, is the DT profile, the advent of DT profile, which allowed you to set default applications for right. specific uh, file types. Right. And that was absolutely one of the best things in the world because oh, yeah. now I can go in and double click and CDE won't be like, well, I'm sorry, that's not installed yeah, right I now. I have that, yeah. It would hook in to MPV or VLC right. or whatever it is that you wanted to deal or Firefox, whatever you wanted to deal with uh, that file type, it would just kind of handle it. Yep. Very reminiscent of the amount of work you have to put into making Firefox the default on Windows 11. Um, but I felt very much more rewarded on CDE because it didn't all of a sudden forget. Yeah, it what respected I wanted. your change and never <laughs> changed it again <laughs> yeah. until you told it to change. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, the the last thing I want to talk about is that Last episode, we were all in on Wayland. Yeah, I still am. And and yep, one hundred percent, all in on Wayland. I mean, if your desktop environment supports Wayland, you should you should be running it at least part time. At least give it a whirl. Out like, I, uh, right. yeah. And if you haven't tried it recently, try it. Yeah, b- yep. make sure you you're, you're you're making an informed decision is what I want to say, because yep. like, and by informed, I don't mean some other blabbering person like myself on the internet i mean actually test it for yourself yeah the applications that you run yes yeah yeah um and th- that's that's how we treated cde but there's one thing that cde you know maybe not for lack of trying mm-hmm. um but there's one thing that cde at least in the short term will not be able to do and that is run on wayland, wayland. yeah well Considering it grew up with X, uh, literally, uh, I mean, that's going to be a hard move right there. It is. It is. So, you know, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll have a WCDE or maybe. something like that. So, so, but I could see that being like something like NSCDE getting, getting some, sure. some love maybe, or something else that, that takes all of that inspiration and 
moves it on to another project potentially. But I could yep. see it happening. I could totally see it happening. Oh, yeah. So right now, CDE runs on X. And that, I think, does kind of point to a situation where you do have to run on X. Yeah. I mean, Elementary's Pan Pantheon still runs on X. Um, Linux Mint's Cinnamon yeah. still runs on X. But both, but, but both of those projects have plans. Correct. They got roadmaps. They, I'm, I'm excited to see how they're going to move to mm -hmm. Wayland. I want to see that growth and how they move there, but CD is uh, probably going to be one of the last, if the never. If ever, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I will say <laughs> a, a, like a lot of them, though, they do have roadmaps to move, and they're working on it, and it's even even some of the old tried and true ones. I mean, they're, they're, all, they're all thinking about it, so yep. I think it's happening. Just like CDE exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think in a, in in many ways to just be historical preservation, um, X will always exist. Yeah, it's, it's going to live on for a while. Yeah, to to in the short term, it's going to live on because people need it. But I think even beyond that, past the ten year mark, where you know pretty much everything supports Wayland, um, there will still be a need for X as far as historical preservation goes, and. I don't mean that there's going to be security patches for it. I just mean that it's going to be supported in such a way that you can install it on some systems, even if you have to compile it from scratch, yeah. to be able to run some of these cool desktops like CDE, which really kind of says, I'm glad that we did CDE now mm -hmm. because there is a concerted effort to move to Wayland. So I get it. I get it. Some get of you it. want to stay on X and some of you have to stay on X, but times man they are a changing they are i made that up i think uh, not bob dylan not me not no i'm but, not sure uh some somebody said times are changing and they are hey you can get all the links to the you know that we've uh got in this show over at linux user space dot show and there's a lot there, there there is a lot there's there's this this is a big episode we got a lot in here Every time I have to publish the YouTube episode, it's like, nah, man, that's over 5,000 characters. Yep. You can't put that in here. And I'm like, uh, okay, I guess I'll just link out to the linuxuserspace.show slash 40 whatever, whatever yeah. for mm -hmm. season, what, four, whatever. We're in season four, yeah. We'll get to we'll get to the 10s soon, but 4XX, whatever. Yeah, so this, episode. this is episode six. Yeah. Anyway, you, you can always email us, contact at linuxuserspace.show. To get the lemmy. All right, that brings us to the next time. Next time Ooh. is a topics episode. We'll probably have some feedback that you've sent us via email or Mastodon or Twitter, even or you know Telegram, Matrix, whatever. We'll, we'll, All the things. There'll be some some ways to send us stuff. But yeah, be careful. Be forewarned. You send us stuff. That makes me think it's going to end up in the show because I like to talk about that. Yeah, kind of stuff. we we do try to hit them all. However, though, that means we need to pick our next thing that we're doing the history on uh, yeah. for an entire month. And so this one, uh, it's going to shock people. I think. I Is think it? It, in a way, it's old. It looks a lot like CDE. I'll tell you that. I didn't think it was this old, though. <laughs> Even with that being true. said, I did not think it was this old. And um, I think it falls next in line, potentially. I don't know. It's it's pretty old. Well, I mean... I, it's got I some it roots. Anyway, what, I'm, what we're talking about, XFCE. Good old X-Face. X-Face. Look, j just, just to start you out, Olivier Fordan started the project in late 1996 as a Linux version of the common desktop environment. I was saying before the show, you, uh, you know, regular listeners of the show, not patrons of the show, uh, will won't hear this part. But uh, that there was there was this whole thing where um, I was chiding Dan. Mm hmm about having good ideas. I don't, he just came out with XFCE and was like, what about XFCE? And, then, and I was like, well, maybe. And then I look into it and then it's the successor. It's the one. It's the Linux successor. It's, uh, what? 
every time. So that's what every we're doing. Time. We're doing XFCE. Can't believe it. I'm. I'm just fine with that. I think it's a it's a fine thing. There's there's plenty of implementations that you can choose from. I know it's not Leo's I'm, favorite. He's he's still upset look, about the whole power management thing listen, and this lid I'm closing. Fine with it. I don't know. If power management works while you connect it to a monitor and multi monitor works, if that is the case, then I'm totally fine with whatever desktop environment it is. Just, just, but for some reason, XFCE wants to fight me. Just just choose it on that laptop over there in the corner and just don't worry about hooking up another monitor to it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that okay. Limit my use cases. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yep. That is XFCE's bread and butter. Limit your <laughs> use cases. <laughs> no, I think that's there's other things that do that more so than XFCE. There's a lot of configuration you can do to it. That's yeah, true. So. I just didn't deal with the fourth config. I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, like CDE, you got to get into the files and start tinkering there. So okay. Um. I don't know. It'll be good. Like, there's plenty of other, there's plenty of distros that uh, do do real nice implementations of XFCE, honestly. Um, that's true. Actually, since uh, we didn't mention it earlier, there's one that's going to be released this week. <gasps> oh, yeah. I dressed, I dressed the part. Yeah, that and all the other flavors. Um, so that's Ubuntu and particularly Zubuntu. Um, mm-hmm. They, they, like this week, which is going to be last week when the episode drops, so that'll be a, that's a little awkward, but that's okay. I'm particularly interested in Ubuntu. That's the budgie Ubuntu, mm. right? Budgie. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's what they call it, mm. uh, officially or unofficially. I don't know. I it th- there's s- not a Ubuntu, right? No Pantheon Ubuntu. No, no. I think that maybe came and went. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Um, not a thing. I'm I'm selfishly interested in Lubuntu and we've got some some big big things happening honestly oh yeah right. I think so we got some good fixes going in and it's looking pretty nice it's, it's pretty mm. snazzy nice little wallpaper it's good I think it's good oh I like that um, sounds sounds like a uh, topic for the a topic, topic show yeah which is next time <laughs> oh yeah that's right join us for more of that absolutely anyway Catch all the links, all the stuff over at linuxuserspace.show. Catch us on Reddit, Twitter, Mastodon, Telegram, Matrix, Discord, whatever. So, Leo, where can we find you? You can always find me at Leo Chavez at Mastodon.social. I put it first. Mm-hmm, that's uh, good. Because good it's first in my heart. And it's first in and, mine, but, too. But, you know, the and Leo Chavez on the Twitter, too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm at KC2BZ at Mastodon.social. And, yeah, I got at KC2BZ at the X.com thing. Ew. Ew. The links are that way, but the site's not that Whatever. It's yeah, not, anyway, you fine. know where I mean. Anyway, mm-hmm. come back in two weeks. Join us again for more Linux user space. Until then. See ya. Bye. Yeah, like, how do we how do we find the desktop environment? So I want a list. So you can install KDE one. Get out, dude. We we sort of kind of did Trinity. Yeah, that that's not time. KDE one. <laughs> no, that's KDE three. But can you really like, as in? There's a KDE one KDE base dash git in the AUR. Okay, take a quick look at the comments on that one. Is it something that you have to get crafty with? Probably. Quick glance. Yeah, I think so. So you gotta get down and dirty with it. You know, so just because I like the just juxtaposition wouldn't it be cool to do the ones that don't support Wayland?